Some time ago I read in the comment of someone else's video that setting up a shaper takes more time than setting up a milling machine. I think that's a very interesting statement. So let's find out. What I would like to do is set up my shaper to make this part. Now this part is already finished of course, but I suppose you've got the idea. And then it should be really interesting if you have a milling machine to do the same, of course, not make this part, but set up your milling machine. And with this I mean set it up that it's ready to cut. So you install a vise, you install a cutting tool, you install the cutting speed, the feet, all you need to install ready to cut the blank of this part. So for the moment there's no vise on my little shaper and no cutting tool and the stroke length is not correct for this thing. So I will install everything. I will put the camera somewhere over there and let it run. And I suppose that's going to be a really boring part to watch. But to brighten it up I can maybe talk a bit about my private adventures. Uh, no, not a good idea. It will be even more boring. Glasses. Chrono. Now what's important to know of course is that it's not a race. There's nothing to win. It's just to compare one to the, the other. So we're hobbyists. We're not in a hurry. Everything goes well. If it takes 10 minutes or one hour, we don't care. less than one hundredth of a millimeter. Lock the table. Set zero. Dialing, whatever. Are we ready to cut? Well, that took six minutes and some small change. Let's say six minutes to make it easy. So if you have a milling machine or also a shaper, why not? Give it a try, install the vise, cutting tool, all stuff you have to do to start cutting and put it in the comments of this video how much time you spend or make it a 
yourself a little video about it and then put of course the link to your video in the comments of this video will make it easier for me to find. Now that we're here comparing milling machines and shapers, why not continue? Let me explain. If you make a part like this one, the same part in a milling machine, you can do this in three setups. That's all. If I make this part here in the shaper, I put my vise in the same way in a length direction. Yeah? This will not work. I put my part blank as deep as I can in the vise on a pair of parallels. Work one surface. Yeah? Surface is finished, flip my part around, do this surface. So these two are now at thickness and parallel. I put my part for the third surface like this in the vise. So it will be square with the vise. Work this one part well, finished. Do part number the face number four. Same, bring it to thickness. Yeah, and then I have to turn my vise around because there's not enough reach to put the part this way in the vise. So turn my part around and then I can do this surface and this surface. Then I go to the drill press, make these four little holes in here. While I'm there, make again another setup to drill and tap these two little holes in the side. Then I mark out, out the bigger boring here, go to the lathe, put it in a forge-out, center it because you, you see that the boring is not in center of the part, so I have to install it in the forge out eccentric and then drill and bore this opening. That's a lot of work, a lot of setups. If you have a milling machine, put your part on parallels that are high enough so there's really much stick out of the part like this. With your cutter, this is my cutter, you work the surface. You can do the contours you know, all in one setup. Take your cutting tool out, drill four holes and then drill the fifth hole and with the uh, boring uh, tool thing, I don't know how you call it, can make the big opening all in one setup. If that's finished, take your part out, flip it around like this in the vise and you can do the contours again and this face in one setup part almost finished. Put it like this in your vise, of course, without parallels. Drill and tap two holes. Game over. So, to make a part like this one in a milling machine is a big win. Shaper, lots of setups, and then in the lathe setups, and then in the drill press setups. This takes a lot of time, of course, for the a hobby is not important because our first creation is always make time and not a part. But in industry, of course, this part is gonna cost a fortune. A few weeks ago I watched videos from uh, Greg 
and from Dell and they were experimenting with carbide in the shape and I think that is interesting. Now they used cutting tools with braced carbide on it. I don't have, I only have inserts and I'm gonna do this experiment exactly the same as they did. Not exactly the same but with the idea. Of course I experimented with it long before, long time ago before they did. But I think it's interesting so let's do this again. I installed a little piece of leather here but you will see better in a second and on the backstroke this piece of leather will protect the cutting point from the, from the tool and of course on the cutting stroke this piece of leather will move away you will see let's give this a go depth of cut 7 tenths of a millimeter the step over is 2 tenths of a millimeter cutting speed is around 7 meters per minute very slow so I think it's about 30 strokes a minute You can hear clearly that the geometry of the cutting tool is not ideal for this work. It's really making a horrible uh, rough sound and you can see here in the slow motion that the chip is not well formed. Let's bump up the speed a bit. Sixty strokes a minute. Cutting speed about fourteen meters a minute. I stopped cutting because I saw that this piece of leather here started to wear really quickly and yes it was a new one. You can even see in the slow motion the little pieces of leather that's uh, flying around. And a problem I had uh, last time I tested this system was that the point of the cutting tool really cut it through the leather and was completely useless and that's where I broke the tip of the cutting tool. 
Now I know it's really hard to see on camera but the surface finish is below zero. This is really not a good surface finish. The reason why is that the cutting speed for this cutting tool should be way higher than what I used. If I can speed up at maximum cutting speed for this cutting tool, which I have no idea how much it is, the surface finish will be much better. Now on camera you can hardly see it or maybe not see it at all if I keep my hand here. You can see until here this part I cut it at 7 meters a minute and from this line about this part I cut it at uh, what was it about 14 meters a minute and you can already see the difference this surface finish is a bit less bad than this surface finish but of course I used a very low speed to prevent the cutting tool from breaking if you use a cutting tool that has the correct geometry and at the right cutting speed and the right depth of cut and feed it should sound like this which of course in this part was absolutely not the case you can, can see in the slow motion that the chip is pushed all the material is really squeezed into each other and it's not making a nice and curly chip as it should be. My thoughts about carbide in the shape. I think it could work if you have a big shaper and you do very large surfaces or for example in a planer. Make sure you have the good geometry cutting tool, it's very important, and a piece of rubber or something that is really wear resistant. This little piece of uh, floppy uh, leather doesn't work. For the kind of work I do here in the workshop with my small shaper, it's not interesting to use carbide, it's way too brittle. I can only hope you found it as interesting as I did. I think it's uh, always nice to do a bit experimenting and having fun with the machines. After all, that's the goal of the hobbyist, having a good time in the workshop.